Hey there, it's been really busy around here and I'm really looking forward to showing you what I've been up to. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get to it. The really good news is the gas man came and filled the tank. There's heat once again, it's so relaxing. In the last video, you saw that the big pergola got smashed down in a storm and it took quite a few days to get it all cleared out after it had been cut off. Unfortunately, all of this wood has been painted over 17 year history. So there's no way it can be burned in the fireplace or even a stove. It's definitely not safe. All traces of pergola are down there now. After a few days of living without the pergola, I can say I quite like it, especially at nighttime. It's beautiful to have the nighttime sky open. I think I'm gonna not replace the pergola and go with a big three by three meter umbrella. I think it's just going to be fine without it. I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm in the olive grove, which is undergoing a really hard prune, which happens every five or six years. I looked into hard pruning on the internet and I found that there were many, many varying opinions about it, some for and some against. I'll withhold my opinion, but I'd be very curious to hear yours. Um, I will say that I'm glad to see that the entire grove isn't being done this time. Some of the trees are being left as they are. Dickie is climbing on behind me is about 70 years old. Some of the trees in this grove are even older than that. There's one that's about 400 years old and the ones that are being hard pruned this year are about 30 or 40 years old. Hi buddy. Oh such a good girl. Such a good girl. You want to fight? You want to fight? Fight? <laughs> You're in a mood today. All the water from my cookie kitchen, my house, and the guest house here is recycled through a yeast based sewage system. And then every tap that you see in the garden is water that's previously been used indoors. So it's recycled water. So that makes it a lot easier to keep the garden lush. Here's that really old tree I told you about. It's right in the center. It must be at least 300, but maybe 400 years old. This cat thinks she's a dog and she follows me around everywhere. So this week was also the final pruning of the vines, which gave me an opportunity to make reaps. There's still quite a lot of pruning to be done, as you can see on some of these. So there'll be a chance to make even more reaps with the really long ones. Today's milling day, but 
before I can mill flour, acorn flour, I need to repair a part of my mill that has broken. I've been using my pin mill uh, with whole acorns rather than sliced acorns like I did for many years. And it was strong enough to grind them up, but obviously the, the net filter can't take that. I'll show you how this works after I get the new one on. The new one just arrived. So how this works is this, you'll see it in the mill, but the mill is working inside and then the flour, whatever's being ground up, in this case acorn flour, you know, as it gets fine enough from the milling process, it passes through this sieve. So as you can see, it's really ripped up. Now that's my fault 100% because I've been asking it to do more than it is designed to do. This is actually trickier than you would think, changing the sieve. You'll see in a second. Okay, so once those are all, take the old one out. Go to the mill. Here's my beautiful big pin mill. ready. It's time to get me ready. down super super fluffy and soft so what I'm going to do now is take this bag off which is full and I'm going to put another bag on because I have some flour that I was milling when the sika ripped which is all chunky and I need to put that back through but I want to do that separately because they are two different patches so they'll have two different expiry dates it's so satisfying when a machine is working optimally one of the things I love best about this mill are the Soviet era controls. 
See you on the other side. I learned the hard way not to store flour in these buckets and to get it sealed up into packages as soon as I mill it to keep it maximum fresh. As soon as the flour was finished, sealed and packed away, I tidied up the shop because we have a three day weekend coming up and I wanna make sure that my shelves are full. Here are a few snapshots of some of the products that I've got in my little shop. If you find yourself on Kea, please come by. There's a big cowbell that you ring and I'll come down and show you around. Last week I found this old wooden box discarded in the garbage and I took it home. On the side, written in French, it says 144 bars of chocolate, 1943. I'm guessing this was how they transported chocolate during the war. Gonna make a great side table. I don't know how people throw these things out. Today I've been invited by the high school to speak with the kids about my business and about opportunities for them on the island. And I'm really looking forward to their questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit eclectic. Do hit the like button, please, and subscribe so you're sure to see what I'm up to next. Have a great week.